We all love to follow trends. I mean, remember fidget spinners and silly bands? And there's no better way to show that you're cool and different than doing the exact same thing as everyone else at any given time. The NFL loves them too, but like all trends, they eventually come and go, like pretty much every online dating relationship. You might have forgotten these relics of a bygone era, but fortunately, I have not. And I'm about to tell you all about the trends that pass through the NFL like a ship in the night, or me through your mom. Let's get it. Is this you opening cabinet doors, wondering why you either don't have good snacks or any at all? Well, guess what I have found? The best site for snacks, nuts.com. And the best part is nuts aren't all they have. Look at this, they have butterscotch fudge and oh my God, chocolate covered cranberries and this half pop popcorn, where have you been all my life? Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, and even specialty flowers. I'm telling you, there is something for everyone. And quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn on the same day it ships so they reach you fresh. And satisfaction is guaranteed. My snack game has been taken up a notch. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com forward slash five points spelled out. So go check out all of the delicious options at Nuts.com forward slash five points. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. Nuts.com. The Wildcat. The Wildcat formation was the ultimate instance of cutting out the middleman. Instead of snapping the ball to the quarterback, who in turn would hand the ball to the running back, the Miami Dolphins head coach figured out one simple trick that defensive coordinators hated. Snap the ball directly to the running back and let him fuck shit up. Of course, the Dolphins came up with this offense in 2008 because it was common knowledge that running back Ronnie Brown had an arm three times as strong as Chad Pennington's. So did Tim Tebow. And it worked to perfection. The first time they unveiled the Wildcat, Miami defeated Bill Belichick's New England Patriots 38 to 13 in Foxborough. Miami rode the Wildcat all the way to the playoffs that season before Ed Reed and Ray Lewis declawed the mighty beast. The cat was already out of the bag. Then all of a sudden, the whole NFL was using this crazy loophole. Running backs all over the league were taking direct snaps, running 99% of the time and throwing it. The other 1%. It usually went for like three to four yards, but whenever they did throw the ball, damn, that was so cool. So what put the Wildcat down? Of course, it was quarterbacks and their massive egos. QBs didn't like the idea of being replaced, outshined by running backs who were making pennies to their dollar. So in the off season, all 32 quarterbacks had a clandestine meeting in the woods behind Ben Roethlisberger's house where they banded together and sent a message to Roger Goodell. They warned that if the Wildcat continue, quarterbacks would go on strike. Strike, I tell you. The NFL knew this would kill the league and thusly, they sent a cease and desist letter to offensive play callers across the country. Actually, what really happened is everyone knew none of the RBs could throw, so they just brought a safety up to play the run to even things out. It's actually very easy to defend. Once you see the formation, sure, you still see the Wildcat every once in a blue moon, but what you don't know is that every running back who takes a direct snap has to pay royalties to their starting quarterbacks, which explains Taysom Hill's huge salary, kneeling. When Colin Kaepernick took that fateful knee in the preseason of 2016 to protest racial injustice in the United States, it sent shockwaves across the NFL. Players from all over the league began joining him in taking a knee. Even famously progressive Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, who has always stood for civil rights. Players left and right were on their knees more than Monica Lewinsky, and it was about to affect the bottom line. Naturally, the NFL did not care for this. Fox News' entire audience threatened that they would stop not watching football. The NFL needed a better way to combat injustice, one that didn't interfere with the national anthem, the song that 95% of you check your phone during anyways. So in the 2020 season, the league hatched an incredible idea that kept players vertical. It was a stroke of genius, just so simple. They wrote end racism in the back of the end zones. And just like that, not only did players stop taking a knee, racism in America faded away entirely. And you can thank the NFL for the colorblind utopia that we live in today. Colin Kaepernick though, yeah, most people think he was blackballed, but he was so pleased with the NFL's effort towards achieving equity, equality. The writer, he left it, Will left in equity here, but 
I'm just gonna say equality. That he hung up his cleats and continued to cash those Nike checks for whatever it is that he does now. Anyways, with just a little paint in every NFL stadium, America became united for the first time. No fans at games. Speaking of 2020, you might have noticed something strange about that year. And no, it wasn't that Mitch Trubisky started a playoff game. I'm talking about something else, a mysterious lack of spectators in the crowd. NFL games are usually packed to the brim with fans on game day, even at FedEx Field. But that year, there were almost no fans to be seen. Attendance was way down. We don't exactly know why there were no fans at NFL games in 2020, but here's a viable theory. NFL fans were so disgusted by Jimmy Garoppolo's performance at the end of Super Bowl 54 that they all individually decided to boycott going to games for an entire year. Plus, you know, all that kneeling. Of course, the NFL likes to keep up appearances, so they tried to pull a fast one on us and set up cardboard cutouts in the stands. Yeah, that's right, those weren't actually fans. So what got people back in the stands for 2021? Well, it took a heroic performance by Tom Brady in Super Bowl 55 to win over the hearts and minds of America and convince them to return in record numbers. Plus, duh, end zone paint. The two tight end offense. The two tight end offense came to prominence in the 2010 season when the Patriots deployed Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez, allowing them to wreak havoc on the NFL for several years. It's called 12 personnel and teams with two capable tight ends were scoring and picking up yards in bunches thanks to the versatility of their tight ends just shooting up and down the field. The Colts drafted Kobe Fleener and Dwayne Allen in 2012. The Broncos had Jacob Tamme and Julius Thomas, and the Eagles had Zach Ertz and Brant Selleck. It was the Patriots, though, who had the most success running 12 personnel. But beyond the numbers and the wins, there was a dark reality emerging. Gronk was getting jealous. He knew he was the superior tight end, and he did something drastic to wrestle the spotlight back. That's right, in 2012, Gronk framed Aaron Hernandez for some nasty crimes that would get me demonetized if I went into full detail. He saw those 18 touchdowns and said, those could be mine. Yes, it was Gronk who hung Hernandez out to dry. So the real reason is that it's very hard to find one elite tight end, let alone two. And if you get two, one will get jealous of the other and you know. And now for our last disappearing NFL trend, the comedians in the booth. Today we have the Manning cast. It's a fun little break from boring old Troy Buck and Joe Aikman. Somewhere dudes can be dudes and have a couple laughs while, you know, also learning something. But in the old days, 2000, Monday Night Football decided to combine those two concepts. It's an hack away he did, like Mr. Miyagi with a chainsaw. What if you could bring laughter to an NFL broadcast? Surely the result would be millions, if not billions of dollars. Into the booth alongside Al Michaels and Dan Fouts entered a comedian by the name of Dennis Miller, a former SNL Weekend Update host known for his hip and always topical references and jokes. Well, folks, tonight's pigskin competition will involve more offensive strategy than an Albert Speer designed German Blitzkrieg. <laughs> and Miller was a smashing success. The experiment became beloved by fans and finally Monday Night Football became appointment viewing in America, in particular on Monday nights. The NFL, the worry warts that they are, became concerned that Monday Night Football was becoming too great of a success and soon people would become disinterested in other broadcasts like Sunday Night Football or Sunday Afternoon Football or Sunday Morning Football or Thursday Night Football or Thursday Day Football or Black Friday Football. They knew that even if they put another community Median in the booth, they could never find one that resonated with the youth of America in the way that Dennis Miller did. Fortunately for the league, the problem resolved itself when Miller went full Kramer and accidentally said the gamer word on live television. That's an obvious no-no. Of course, the broadcast was on a seven second delay and a brave producer was able to cut the audio where Miller's vile obscenity could have reached hundreds of American living rooms. But man, do we miss these gems? On the other side of the ball, you got the bucko skipper Tony Dungy, who's created a pass rush that's about as volatile as Dennis Hopper after a three-day crystal meth binge, but... Following the 2000 season, Dennis Miller was let go from Monday Night Football. But now, if they want something hilarious on a football broadcast, you can just watch the Jets. <laughs>